like to call the June 9th, 2020 Governing Board meeting of CV Fiber to order. I'm going to start the recording. And we are now recording. Thanks again to Orca for uh, coming to this meeting as well and recording what we're doing here. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none. I got one. Um, I got one. I got one. Okay. Okay, David. <laughs> the uh, item number RDOF partnership update could also be RDOF ISP update. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Um, I'd also, I don't know that we need to uh, update the, the agenda necessarily, but I think during public comment, if we could do some uh, introductions because we have a couple, again, board shifts, not really big changes, but just board shifts. Any other additions or changes to the agenda, Michael? Yeah, um, I'll just do a quick report on um, COVID-19 um, funding because there's so been some that yeah, that's actually our very first agenda item after public comment oh, reports back yeah. about the about the action at the state level. I knew there was going to be more stuff going on, so I that's going to be a a placeholder item for the foreseeable future, I think. So I I will let you start that one when when we get there. Um, okay. Okay. Public comment. Any commentary on anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, uh, let's move on to reports back about recent meetings and action at the state level. Michael, why don't you kick us off? You said um, you were going to do introductions? Oh, yeah, do that first. <laughs> Thanks, Siobhan. Um, so, um, uh, Jonathan Williams, as you know, had to leave the board, albeit briefly. We twisted his arm and he was appointed as the alternate for Barry City, replacing um, Lucas Herring, who was finding it uh, hard to have his day job and his job as the mayor and to be showing up for CV fiber stuff. So Jonathan is back with us uh, in, yeah. that, in that slightly modified okay. form. So that's exciting. Um, Marshfield appointed a select board member, Rich Baker, who is uh, here with us today. You can see him. Um, and uh, John Morris, who is currently labeled as couch because that's his couch computer, um, is interested in becoming the primary delegate for Marshfield. and. Uh, um, if uh, John and Rich, if you want to take maybe just a second and say a couple things about yourself, and just so we so we know a little bit more about you. Yeah, um, I'm on the Marshfield Select Board for the last uh, three years, I think, and uh, was on the Planning Commission for about eight years. Um, retired mostly, and used to work as the uh, zoning director at Stowe and Barry City previously to that. Cool. Thanks, Rich. John? Uh, so I I have a little tiny bit of experience with town government. I was on the Energy Committee for a little while. And uh, I work as an editor. My wife and I have a business. So we, we do. I have a lot of experience with graphic design and editing. I also have... Uh, pretty good understanding of uh, most technical subjects. And I'm just looking to help out wherever I can. All right, thanks very much, John. Calm down, Chuck, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see it, can't you? <laughs> yeah, and, and John, Chuck, Chuck was one of the people I was uh, suggesting you might work with on the communications committee if you decided you <clears throat> wanted to spend, spend a bit of extra time on there. And so Chuck, Chuck is our chair of the communications committee, so you guys can maybe touch base later. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's do some reports back about recent meetings and action at the state level. <clears throat> Michael, you start us off and we got some other um, some other meetings to fill people in on, but I think yours today and in the last week or so can probably do a pretty good summary. Well, sorry, anyhow. Um, so the House Energy and Technology Committee has been working on a package of um, broadband support provisions to recommend to the Appropriations Committee to pass as part of the big budget bill. And um, every few days, they 
they get input from all kinds of providers and, and constituents who want different things. But every few days, they have to change what they're putting in their recommendations because they get more information from the US Treasury um, called guidance, which restricts over and over and over again what they can get with the money, what they can spend money on. And um, so the latest development was that um, anything that's sort of theoretically broadband related that isn't specifically aiding somebody affected by the pandemic is not eligible. So all kinds of things that we were hoping to get funded, um, work provisions for CUDs, um, funding of various different kinds of projects are now very narrowly construed and have to be related to specific students who couldn't get online during the um, lockdown and um, telehealth facilities, but not telehealth consumers and, and so forth. So I won't go through all of it, but the point is that there's a lot of disappointed folks and um, there are still a whole lot of providers at the trough trying to get money and um, sort of jostle, jostling each other out of the way saying, you know, this is more important than that and so forth. So this is kind of the ugly part of how legislation gets passed, but it, on top of it, it's not just state politics, it's federal politics and federal bureaucracy that's that's influencing it a lot. Um, so I made, I made a presentation today, um, probably the third time, um, about why in the short term under this funding, they should fund fixed wireless solutions because it can get done this year before the funding runs out, unlike most fiber projects, which can't. And um, there were people saying things like uh, wireless, you know, basically they were saying wireless sucks and you shouldn't spend any money on it. But there, unfortunately, the committee um, was very responsive and after the meeting, they asked me to uh, draft some legislation for them. So that's what I spent my whole unplanned afternoon. I was planning on doing other things, but I spent my whole afternoon writing legislation. And who knows if any of it's gonna even get through the appropriations committee. But so that gives you a flavor of what's been going on. I don't know if you have specific questions of me or, or maybe that's enough anyhow. Um, so I'll pass it back to Jeremy. You can talk about something else now. Or... Yeah, so one of the things that I, that I thought was interesting, um, and I actually went and checked that the assertion, the folks from Comcast and the cable providers and from Consolidated were, were there testifying today. And Comcast said that they they offer, there are gigabit offerings that they have for a mm -hmm. not insignificant number of subscribers in Vermont, which I just picked a random address on Main Street in Montpelier, and uh, half of those advertised speeds that they had on their in their uh, presentation were were just not available. So I don't know if that's because that was too far away, but uh, I'm I'm suspecting that there's probably more to the picture um, than than what they were saying then. But uh, yeah, they they definitely want to they definitely want a slice of that pie, and they're they're saying, well, we can bring you know, we can bring 25.3. I mean, even the, you know, Consolidate is saying, oh, yeah, we can do 25.3-ish. No, 25.2. Yeah, yeah, but it's never actually 25.2 unless you're sitting right on top of their, you know, of right. their uh, what the that's, terminal there. But. That's what I'm paying for, and I never get it. But, but I've been they admit paying that for the years. First, it's the first time I ever heard them admit it publicly that they can't possibly achieve 25.3. Um, so they're so, frozen out the broadband definition, even if they can deliver the the full twenty five two. So, yeah, that was a little um, that was that was interesting. I thought I thought, but yeah. So in terms of what the the COVID money can be spent on, I think it's probably not um, not looking favorable for us in terms of a source of capital, but it could be 
um, could be useful in terms of some other sort of uh, nibbling around the edges things <clears throat> if the legislator legislature can get uh, creative about it then again everything that the energy and tech committee you know pitches over at appropriations appropriations might like i think like tim said in the meeting it, they could just you know crush it under their boot and move on and choose something else so um so you, you you might be spending spending a good deal of time writing writing your legislation michael and then i know but is it but isn't that the way it always goes it's been that way for all years. right um so there's another um so we talked previously and i think i sent a uh, message out about the actually we talked about this at the last meeting the possibility of having a uh, cud consortium um, i'm going to sit on that um, that was a meeting that we had um, briefly i actually there were some technical issues with my uh, not with my network connection surprisingly this time it was really just about software um, so i will update about that during the consortium agreement discussion uh, we also had another um, we had a brief sort of touch base with um, inter -Isle just to find out where they are and uh, how we're going forward. And we saw a little um, snapshot uh, of a, the spreadsheet and the, the business model and the business plan that they're working on right now, which, was, uh, which I, I thought was pretty good given, given um, how far along they are. And they said, I think, uh, what did they say, Michael? He'd be able to share like a preliminary draft of that that's really ready a bit more for board consumption by the, the end of this week, something, does that sound right? Uh, it might have been two weeks, but it's soon. Yeah, two weeks. Okay, next week. For, next for week, the, Jeremy. Was it next yeah. week, Jerry? Okay, thank you. So that's um, yeah, that was very encouraging, and it was uh, it was kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna put put Jerry on instead of caller caller zero one. Um, it was it was really encouraging because he had it set up as an Excel spreadsheet, and if we wanted to play with different take rates, if we wanted to change our assumptions. If we wanted to be much more, you know, conservative with our expectations for costs and this sorts of thing, uh, we could plug it in there, and it would sort of then propagate across what he had, ten years of forecasting or something, quarter by quarter, and it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it looked like, I mean, so as being sort of a, a data and a spreadsheet nerd, I kind of appreciated looking at it, and uh, I'm going to appreciate having a chance to, to to dig through it too. But I think it compellingly makes the case for. Um, the feasibility should the numbers work out. Um, one of the things that I noticed, and I don't know if you saw this in um, the Mansfield testimony, Michael, um, in Leslie's testimony today, one of the things she said about the turnaround time for the Vita loan, she said it was in, in terms of weeks. So it was like two weeks. Yep. So um, we probably need to put that in our our timeline that it may not take as long for Vita to move on this as we as we thought. I thought it was going to take a much longer time, but if we've got pre-vetted stuff that we can hand to them, it may it may be pretty pretty snappy. It may be, but keep in mind they're a functioning business, and so they have more of a, a history, and yeah. we are not a functioning business. And their ask was very modest and simple. Touche. But it's still possibly true. Because if, if DPS does all the vetting and Vita trusts them, it might go fast. Right? So when, when we I talk about the hold on. Let, let, let's let Ray go first and then we'll get you, David. Yep. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking about the COVID nineteen uh, broadband funding, were we talking about the federal money? And how is that the same or different from uh, Scott's 95 million for broadband. They're one in the same because um, it's really, it's not even 95 million anymore. We don't know what it is, but it's 20 um, million. Well, yeah, that's he's, he's posing right. 20 million right now. And the, and the yeah. house is proposing a hundred. Yeah. Except, except they were given the instruction. I think it was 35 or 45. Anyway. Yeah, it's it, it sort of it sort of depends on who's giving the orders. I mean, <laughs> all right. Anyway, David, I I talked to Vita last week, and they said it could take up to about two months. And the critical thing, critical path for us is the Department of Public Service approving our business plan. Okay, 
that's that's good news indeed, and that's I think that sort of fits in with what our expectations were in the first place. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure that it's uh, you know two weeks, two months uh, substantially changes our our trajectory. I mean, it'd be obviously be much nicer to have things, you know, have have the uh, the loan ready to go sooner. But yeah, um, any other meetings or anything else folks want to report back on from the last. Uh, Last two weeks. Uh, WEC. Okay. Okay. Who who met with WEC? Um, I did. Um, well, did we have a meeting? I I was in a lot of communications. Um, I think we're going to have a meeting. That's what it is. Okay. WEC is um very excited about working with their chosen consultant. NRTC, which is a firm that specializes in representing electric co-ops in broadband situations. And um, they have really, you know, it's been this slow locomotive pulling out of the station. They are now really excited. And they're excited about working with this outfit because um, it has 55 co-ops across the country who are allied together in a, consort, a bidding consortium for RDOF funding. And WEC has basically made the decision they are going for RDOF and they wanna be part of this consortium and they're gonna pay their consultant an extra fee to do that. And they're encouraging us to consider joining with that consortium, which we can discuss again later when we get to that topic. Um, the main point is that the WEC, which has been on again, off again, on again, off again, seems to be pretty close to fully committed to wanting to build a fiber network on their poles for their use in cooperation with us. But we don't have an agreement with them. So that's to be worked out if it's going to be worked out. Well, if we're going to do that, could you just tell me who is WEC? Uh, you know. Washington Electric Co-op. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks. They, that's what they call themselves. And don't so, don't uh, ever call don't ever call Vermont Electric Co-op WEC. They hate it. <laughs> They're VEC. So um, given the window of time for when the short form applications need to be going in for RDOF, um, we should probably be looking at having that, that agreement um, soon. I mean, we probably need to talk to them more concretely then. I, I think we have to, and, and I think the business committee and um, Greg Kelly and I as liaison and you should be meeting with them um, very soon. Okay. So, yeah, so I think we'll probably need to uh, kind of f figure out how that's going to, uh, how that's going to work if we are going to try to do work with ValleyNet or if we're going to work with, um, yeah, it's going it to be kind of, kind of interesting if we end up competing with them. Hopefully that's not the case, but Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out maybe in the, we'll talk about that maybe in the later agenda item. Any other meetings folks want to report back on? Okay, so let's move on to uh, update and discussion about private fundraising and loans. I don't know if, uh, if yeah, if, you, if Chuck or Phil, if you have anything to update about that. Um, <clears throat> I don't have anything new to add. Um, I, I did get a copy uh, from San Williams of the um, the last note offering, not their not the bond issue, um, which is not terribly complicated. And if we decide that we do want to go that route, I think we can pull something together fairly quickly. But I think at the last meeting we were kind of up in the air about going in that direction until you know what other kind of funding uh, is available uh, per Stan's recommendation that we may not have to take that step if there's other other funding. But 
as we are hearing earlier, that seems to be a moving target right now. Uh, Chuck, did you have anything? Yeah, so I met with the uh, Vermont Community Foundation located out of Middlebury um, and uh, met with a couple of their principals over there. And uh, they have decided to put a fair amount of their philanthropic efforts into broadband expansion in Vermont, which is great. Uh, that said, um, in discussing with them, they're leaning more toward trying to figure out how they can have a statewide impact rather than necessarily helping directly fund individual CUDs. Um, so we actually talked a lot about uh, the emergence of this coalition that we're going to talk about more tonight and talked a lot about uh, you know, Rob Fish's activities with the state and, and how they could potentially support CUDs on a broader perspective. And some ideas they're tossing around are, are trying to help fund grant writers that, that could then volunteer their time to CUDs across the state and, and things of that nature. So um, I basically uh, indicated to them that we should stay in touch. And as, as they're thinking on this matures, we can certainly figure out how to help one another, but it doesn't sound like there'll be a, a direct source of potential funding for us at this point. Jeremy? Uh, real quick, Chuck, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the name of that organization. Vermont Community Foundation. Okay, thank you. Ray? Yeah, Chuck, did you have any feel for how much money they have? Uh, I did not. They, they did talk about, um, they, they have a grant process right now where you can get $2,000 to, to kind of kick, kick, kick things off. And I said, well, you know, we're, we're, we're a little beyond that, I think, at this point in time. Um, let, let that be for other CUDs who are just barely getting started. Uh, but uh, it sounded like on the order of magnitude, their total fund is probably in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, also on this topic, the um, um, somebody named John Roy, some of you may know that name, some of you may not. Uh, EC Fiber, um, he was apparently involved with um, the development of those promissory notes along with um, Paul Giuliani. So he's giving a, a presentation. I just sent, I forwarded the invite to you, Phil, and to you, Chuck, because you're sort of um, spearheading this. Um, I may or may not be on that on that meeting, but uh, the, the idea here is that EC Fiber reached out to him and said, hey, would you be willing just to sort of talk out uh, what happened back in uh, whenever that was, when they started uh, with those promissory notes? So he may be able to answer questions and get a better lay of the land. Um, so I've uh, already asked if it's okay to uh, to add you two to that. So I figured um, if that's convenient for you, then pop on. If for, for whatever reason, if neither of you can make it, I'll, I'll join that. Okay, I guess, I guess the question I would have on that is, if we're as a board really leaning toward tabling this concept, should we uh, save the social capital and and you know say, hey, you know we're 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 not really interested in pursuing this just yet, uh, but you know we'd love to have this conversation down the road if we if we change our mind just to save him the time and energy. He's all, he's presenting to all of the CUDs statewide, oh, yes. so there's okay, no cool. there's no kind of mar marginal cost. So. To, if you, if you want to attend, that's fine. If not, I mean, he's still going to be presenting it. So yeah, I see that the you know, like NEK guys are there, the folks from Southern Vermont are there. Um, because the question kept coming up in these consortium calls and sort of the various um, you know, cross CUD calls, that they had been asking those questions. And I had, I mean, we had already kind of talked through this at a superficial level with uh, EC Fiber, but then folks at EC Fiber said, well, well okay. Let's just go and just give uh, just give them a brain dump. Let's give everybody the brain dump so everybody can know where that is, where um, where they started. And Siobhan, you had your hand up. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> the uh, Vermont Community Foundation has three hundred and ten point five million in total assets in twenty seventeen. Cool. They uh, got forty nine million in contributions in 2017 and they granted out 15.1 million in 2017. That is huge. Okay. It, 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 they didn't seem like they were at that scale based on our conversation, but uh, I was speaking to the people who are specifically investigating broadband expansion. So it may be that broadband expansion is just getting a subset of that. Cool. 
Thanks for that, Siobhan. Michael? Um, just uh, John Roy was one of the two founders of EC Fiber with Stan Williams. I think regardless of whether we're interested in the promissory note path right now, um, somebody attending there is going to pick up some uh, IP from him that'll be valuable to us. He, he's a good guy and he knows an awful lot. And he was there before they had good money and stuck with them a long time. So, and Doris I just checked my schedule and I, I can definitely join at the time uh, that, that is there. So, Phil, feel free to join with me, but I'll, I'll be there. <clears throat> What's the date and time? It's uh, Monday from two to three or three to four, uh, two to four, Monday, two to, two to four. Two to four. Okay, that'll probably work. Good. John, I saw you had your hand up. Is that open to anybody or just uh, are they keeping it restricted? Um, this, uh, it was really, uh, it was on offer to uh, communications union district members, but if you are going to be, if you're sending your letter of uh, interest to um, the Marshfield Select Board, you know, some of whom are represented here tonight. Um, yeah, I'll, I can connect you with that as well. Just uh, s s would you send me an email to that effect and I'll forward that on to you? Okay. Yeah. All right, so where am I in the agenda? Anything else about uh, private fundraising and loans that we should have on our, our radar that we need to talk about? Okay. RDOF partnerships update slash RDOF ISP update. Um, David, you wanted to talk about the, you want to talk about this ISPs and whatnot? Yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> to date, we have had responses to the solicitation we made um, for an IDOF and, and our ISP provider. We got a formal response from Tilson, Cloud Alliance, Kingdom Fiber, and then were the negotiations with WEC and the RDOF thing. And then for some reason, ValleyNet didn't re didn't respond yet. I've got another e out, email out to Chris Rake here to find out what's going on. But those are the, we got two formal uh, requests. Um, Tilson's, oh, I, I'm going to meet with the business committee on this, but Tilson's um submittal was in the context of elco and vermont utilities i th i think the reason that we didn't see one from ValleyNet is because this these discussions of the the larger cud consortium are happening and i think um at, for, at least from what i understand if if it's going to go forward if, if ValleyNet's going to spearhead some RDOF stuff, it's probably going to be in the context of a um, CUD consortium of all of us together. So okay. um, that could be why they chose not to respond to us directly. I mean, that that that, that call certainly happened, and there was that conversation. Like I said, I, I got disconnected mm -hmm. before I heard the whole thing, but I'm well. Uh, I I mean, this inquiry was as much for an ISP as it was for the RDOF funding. So that's why it was. Sort of mystified that they hadn't responded. Yeah, I mean, it could just be the <laughs> the, the yeah, fact that I'm we've been ta talking to them about this for two or three years now, and you know, we kind of know know them as a you know as a contender. Um, right. Yeah, it's just strange that they wouldn't have just said sent the courtesy email and said yes, we're yes, we're so, interested. But so over the next couple of weeks, I can see you know the meeting with WEC. And their partnership and us having to make a decision who to partner with um, and what are the implications of partnering with one or the other in the long term and that both in terms of ownership and and um, the servicing and all those things so it's going to get pretty complicated pretty quick and we may have to have some actions regarding how we proceed in a good understand and have a good understanding of what it all means because it ain't going to be totally straightforward so anyway, that's my report today. Um, I just sent out a notice for a business committee meeting for next Tuesday. So it'll be on the agenda for their meeting. So larger board, is there anything that you would like the business development committee to consider in particular when we're kind of getting to these um, really concrete decision points 
um, because we, I mean, the, the applications for the RDOF, the short form, that first step, that's June, or sorry, July 1st to July 15th. Right. Um, so we don't really have much time, and it's likely that we are going to be making a pretty concrete decision about this at our next meeting, which we're going to have to have another June meeting in two weeks. Um, so if anybody has any sort of bigger ideas or thoughts that the business development needs to uh, chew on at its next meeting, this would be the time. Mm. Oh, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you on that committee too, Andy, though? Yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm an honorary attendee. <laughs> I'll, go. I, I'll try to go to this one. Um, yeah. I guess it's just hard. I mean, it really, it's more an expression of there's so much uncertainty. It's very difficult uh, and not uncertainty in a bad way, but there's just a lot of different options and yeah. <laughs> different things being thrown around. So it's going to, it just makes the task that much more challenging. Um, so, I mean, I think the focus is, yeah, I, I can't, I can't offer anything concrete beyond that, except that this is a challenge. I, I get that we all got to kind of get focused on it, but this is a challenge. So, so let me maybe ask a slightly more concrete question of everybody. You know, it's it's appearing that there's there's a handful of alternatives to going after this this federal funding, um, and it seems unwise to not go after this federal funding. That is certainly an option. We can we can choose to not go after it. I just think that that would be. I think personally, I think that would be foolish because uh, we're essentially allowing the federal government to subsidize someone who's going to come in and prevent us from. You know, hitting that mission of providing you know, high-speed access to everybody. So we're really looking at ValleyNet EC Fiber as a partner, and or probably more like or WEC or Washington or Waitsfield Champlain Valley. Um, I'm not sure that there is a uh, well, and okay, and there's a and there, I see there's a, a Cloud Alliance Kingdom Fiber option down there. Uh, no, toward but also, Waitsfield Champlain Valley did not respond. Right. Oh, they didn't. Okay. Well, so uh, so that was me uh, jumping the gun there. So so let me just remove them and put Michael and, and his his group in there. So th and, I mean, those and, are really and Tilson. Tilson. And, that's another and, one. And and, and 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 Tilson too. But I I have some uh, I have some uh, reluctance about Tilson, and we can maybe talk about that mm -hmm. in business development. But um, in terms of my own personal perspective, sure, Tilson is technically in the mix. But I really only see, uh, again, me personally, I see three um, options going forward: WEC, ValleyNet, EC Fiber, and uh, Kingdom Fiber Cloud Alliance. Um, pros, cons, feelings about that, and I, and I certainly don't mean to throw Tilson under the bus. If everybody's saying, "Yeah, we ought to go Tilson and think about what those options are," then let's let's start talking about what are the what are how are we going to decide? I mean, that's those are really our decisions. You know, how are we going to decide, Siobhan? So, if we go ValleyNet, we're not doing WEC. Or can we do both of those? Do ValleyNet in this area and WEC in this area? Or WEC does, you know, we rent from WEC, but we're doing the operator with Valley. I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Um, because it, so it, it sounds to me like we pick one and that's it. That's all we're going to do. ValleyNet isn't interested in doing any of the the stationary fixed wireless cycle stuff. Mix, mixed wireless, that's it. Fixed, yeah. Oh, fixed, fixed wireless. I know this. Um, <laughs> and so, if we go with ValleyNet, we're cutting off that avenue completely, and we have been historically reluctant to do that. So now it seems like we're going to have to make that decision first, because if we decide we absolutely are not going to cut off that route, ValleyNet is out of the picture. Not, I mean, they're only out of the picture in the IDOF thing. They're still in the picture as an ISP. Uh, oh my God. Well, well so because because check it out. If, if, if WEC builds their own fiber, they're not going to be an ISP. They're going to be looking for somebody to operate it, and they could be handing those keys off to us, and then we sort of hand those keys off as to as like a subcontracting role out 
to ValleyNet again. I mean, it's That's what I was just suggesting. If we work with, we could work with WEC on the fiber stuff, and then ValleyNet comes in and does the operations. <laughs> but who? But who owns the fiber? And everybody will be happy. You got it. <laughs> yes. But but who owns the fiber and who gets the the federal money? That's why. That's what makes yeah, this okay. sticky. And the RDOF yeah. rules. The RDOF rules prohibit conversations, even conversations between, you know, via third parties between bidders once they've signed up. So if WEC signs up as a bidder in a consortium or otherwise, and ValleyNet signs up as a bidder in a consortium or otherwise, they can't talk to each other about the auction or anything and substantial And they can't talk to it. us. Because it's likely for that, that conversation to, the to be passed through one way or the other. So it's it's so that yeah. it can, that can be a properly competitive and um, correct process. Jeremy? Uh, so, but after the funding is awarded, like say WEC got the WEC polls and, and they won that auction and ValleyNet won somewhere else, then at that point they could talk to each other, correct? Correct. Okay. But but they also can't collude ahead of time to say, you take this bit, you take this bit. I mean, that's there's some specific direction in the FCC um, public uh, notice thing that says, yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, e even though in some ways, you know, by you know, if the, the CUD is working together, you know, we're sort of uh, implicitly implicitly staking our out our territory. I mean, we wouldn't expect ValleyNet just to go and say, oh, well, more town. There you go. We got gotcha. you. I mean, that just they 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 wouldn't do that, but we. We also couldn't just we couldn't make an explicit agreement with them that they wouldn't that they wouldn't do that sort of thing. <laughs> so, clarify Jeremy. we couldn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Let Jeremy go ahead. Uh, oh no, it's it's fine. Go ahead. I, I just, oh, just to clarify on that point. So like, hey, hypothetically, we want we wanted to check, pick two, pick Kingdom Wireless and and ValleyNet. Um, you know, to go for specific segments or specific aspects, just because, you know, ValleyNet doesn't do wireless, but we want to, you know, or that type of a situation. And we're not trusted to broker that we keep that separate or? It, it would it would be dicey because if there's any, you know, if there's any sense of impropriety or if there's, you know, any information that gets shared about one's bidding strategy or bidding right. price from one to the other, then both parties get disqualified. They just go away. They do not participate in the auction anymore. When we might go for RDOF, though, we're going to go for the whole CUD geographic area, or we're going to target underserved specific areas. Th that strategy is going, to, is going to depend on who we're going to partner with. So, right, I mean, it's... Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Jeremy. <laughs> So it seems like if we go with WEC, we can we can kind of only go for areas areas that have WEC poles. That might get done faster because they have a limited area. It sounds like ValleyNet, if ValleyNet goes after it, they're going to go after the whole state. Is that right with the CUD consortium? Potentially. Which, I mean, okay, which would include us. Um, I guess how would uh, Kingdom Fiber and uh, and uh, Cloud Alliance? What's what's the difference? Maybe Michael could speak to that about you know how um, you know would he be going after all or would we be going after with him all of uh, our territory? Well, to, the first thing I have to say is my third annual statement about conflicts of interest this <laughs> needs to be you don't talk <laughs> um, so so i'm a member of the cb fiber board i am also proposing a business relationship with cb fiber um i clearly have a conflict of interest here so i want to be careful not to violate anybody's um situation in relation to that. I'm willing and I think very able to talk in general terms about this whole topic, but I'll steer clear of, of 
speaking poorly of any of the other candidates or speaking up for my candidacy for this position, but just talk about um, what I see as maybe consequences of different different strategies. But I but it is risky, and and it may be better for me not to say anything at all. And so I'm I'm really asking you all to give me guidance on that. Yeah, this is Ken. I think, Michael, it, it is time on this topic for you to put into writing your proposal about what a partnership would be between um, Cloud Alliance and <clears throat> CV Fiber. He did. And, and, and then, I, well, I, 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 I submitted to the business committee, to, to David, okay. a six-pager, okay. um, and, and it doesn't, ex that wasn't, one of the questions to be asked, answered. Um, <laughs> I didn't answer it specifically that way, but I certainly can expand on it. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that's what we'll do during the business meeting is we'll send requests out to the various respondents sure. um, with some specific questions to answer. And then that body absent Michael will go through what those submissions are. So just so everybody knows, yeah. I, when I sent out this uh, request, I gave, I think there's seven criteria I asked them to respond to. And so if there are more criteria you want to ask them, we can. But Michael and Tilson sent me complete responses to every question. So I developed a, uh, I have developed a ranking sheet for all of the, the questions we asked against the, the, the candidates who submitted them. So we have, hopefully on next week, We'll have something to 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 work on, and I did like that question because it's now it is to me even more complicated than when I originally <laughs> described the criteria because this thing with with WEC is pretty com compl complicated in itself because it's a whole different model of them owning the infrastructure, owning the fiber, but somebody else owning all the other infrastructure. So how we finance all of that over time and then operate it over time is a big different it's a different model than i think we hope that washington electric would do this but i don't think we had any expectation they would they would come through on it so who owns the infrastructure and how it's paid for over time and what the lease would look like is all complicated stuff um which is maybe have nothing to do with the idop thing but it does you know relate to it so but I enjoy so are, are, Yeah, are, are, are there other questions that the business development committee should be um, should be tackling, should be sending to the uh, potential partners as ISPs or as uh, RDOF partners um, that we haven't asked? I mean, so that was a that, that's a good question. I'm glad we kind of brought that to the front. Is there anything else that if we had a potential partner coming forward, what would you want to ask them? What would you want to know? And I mean, we don't have to, you don't have to answer that right now, but you should hopefully be able to answer that soon. Yes, soon. And, and when's, when's the meeting uh, was, we were gonna shoot for next week, David, what was the plan? It's Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Okay, yeah, I, I haven't checked my email. I, I did see that something came in. 5.30 on Tuesday? Okay, so yeah, by the by the weekend, hopefully, and then this can be sort of a, a assembled cleanly. All right, anything else on RDOF that folks want to talk about? Uh, yeah, today is the day they dumped all the data. We now know. Oh, really? Um, I've been looking all day long, and I just during this meeting checked the website, and it doesn't say preliminary locations anymore. It says locations. Huh. So interesting. We can we can update all the maps, figure out what how much money is really available, um, which which census blocks just disappeared. What I didn't I, I looked very quickly, but I didn't notice uh, the new rules for the auction procedure, which we're waiting for, um, which affects bidding strategy and things like that. And there was another um, there was another category of information. It was supposed to come out today also, but I didn't see. I just saw the, well, they, the locations were. 
Yeah, they, they supposedly just had a meeting today to to accept the yep. and finalize that. So I'm I'm still I'm looking at the auction 904 at FCC.gov and it still says preliminary list. Or am I in the wrong oh. place? Um, Maybe my, my browser hasn't. Uh, oh, no, it. You know what? You're right. You're right. It still is. But, I didn't but it see should, it should be coming pretty soon, though. It was supposed to come out today. And it and it very well still still might. So we'll we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Anything else on uh, Ardoff? Okay. All right. Uh, we are ahead of schedule by quite a bit. Uh, interest from other towns. Um, I <clears throat> have had a conversation with, um, continue to have conversations with folks from Duxbury, and uh, it's fairly likely that we will hear from them um, probably after a lot of the heavier lifting of the summer is over. But we may hear from them uh, August, September. and. Uh, Maybe they will be wanting to wanting to join us. They sort of they just wanted to get a sense of how we were how we were proceeding and and so I, I think they're not complete not completely sure about how uh, how we're constituted. And they said, you know, what, would you be a partner or would you be a subcontractor? And I said, well, that's not really the way we work. I was like, well, if you join, then we're going to get you service. That's just how because it's in our mission to give you know all of our members service. So. We're not really in a position to subcontract in the way that you would think of, you know, some you know, construction company or something. It's not; it doesn't work like that. So um, that wasn't really. I don't think that was an answer that was terribly satisfying to them. But um, and I was kind of hoping that uh, that somebody from Duxbury would be on this afternoon or this evening to uh, chat about this. But he didn't. He's not here at the moment. Um, and then. Um, Siobhan, any um, you want to talk about Washington briefly? I'll I'll go ahead and go to the meeting um, okay. on the seventh, uh, July seventh. Um, I'll wear two masks and glue plastic over my face or something because I've got a secondary health condition. But yeah, we'll I'll I'll go. It should be we'll be fine. Summer's gonna be fine. Everybody's fine. It's all great. But yeah, I'll go uh, because I really, I really don't think they're going to have a call-in function. I, 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 do they even yeah. have a town hall? They have a town hall, right? Yeah. I, I just, yeah, they just don't seem um, keen on that kind of. I don't even know if they've had a June meeting, to be honest. I don't know if they've just been not meeting. Um, but yeah, so I'll go in July and uh, see how that lays. So and so, so my my instinct about that is that uh, th they may be willing to move quicker than uh, quicker than Duxbury, anyways. And I think that's a kind of a logical geographic location, but uh, they're sort of they're kind of kind of late to the game, frankly, because we're going to have to re refigure how we uh, how we think of them as we go through you know our, the next stages of our various projects. Um. Okay. Moving on to CUD consortium agreement. Everybody should have gotten a copy of the uh, consortium agreement that I put in the in the email that I got from FX Flynn from uh, EC Fiber. Everybody did see that? I didn't get one of those, probably because I came in so late. Correct. Let me, um, I will just shoot that to you if I can find it. Um, I think I have. I don't, you don't necessarily need to interrupt the meeting to do that. Okay. Well, I just did. Um, right. ch chair's privilege or something, right? Um, okay. So, any any thoughts about um, this? I mean, this is a very skeletal agreement. You know, it's really looking at not creating something quite so big as like a Vermont League of Cities and Towns, but more of a vehicle for us to. Have a kind of a standard way to pool some, you know, administrative resources, or um, have w one place where we might do um, outreach. Um, not necessarily, you know, ha you know, having a paid lobbyist or anything like that, but um, there's there's not that much in terms of what we're authorizing this other organization to do. 
but there was a lot of interest and, and a fair bit of like wordsmithing and kind of going back and forth about what um, what the various visions were for what this organization was. And I think the general consensus, and I certainly don't want to speak to everybody that was on that call, the general consensus was that we wanted to create something that was lightweight, agile, and that wasn't usurping any of the heavier responsibilities that went with the individual CUDs. And certainly didn't want to get in the middle of, you know, um, CUD on CUD friendly fire. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, that generated probably more discussion after the meeting than during the meeting, and actually I, I noticed there were some emails going back and forth with this board as well a bit, was what we were going to name it. Um, because there, some people were nervous about Vermont Municipal Telecom Association. Well, is it going to be all CUDs or is it going to be other municipal telecommunications entities? Will we include, you know, the formerly known as Burlington Telecom? Will we include Mansfield? Will we include Newbury that's not really a CUD? Or are we just going to be our own fun club of only communications union districts? Um, so any sort of uh, general feedback about this? Um, should we go forward and sign something like this? I'm not asking for authorization to sign the contract as is, because this is this is not done. But any sort of thoughts you might have, I will definitely take back. Siobhan? So I got to this agreement, the agreement is entered and I had to go lay down for half an hour. It was so boring. Couldn't they spice Written it up lawyer. a little bit? Yeah, and I also, I didn't see any mention of appurtenances in there. What about the appurtenances? Are we, you know, I'm just, <laughs> oh. just saying, you know, we gotta take care of the appurtenances too. <laughs> uh, it was so, it's so, there's, this doesn't seem to say a lot. It, it was written by a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, as you, as you know, from the last meeting, I like the idea of us grouping together and pooling effort because, you know, we're all going to need grant support and we're all going to need that kind of thing. I, I think it's a good idea. And, you know, I'm just the things that it mentions, I agree with. And so at this point, I'm like, yeah, this is good so far. And I can't think of anything to add to it. So I'll shut up now. This is David. I don't think it. I think it should only be Cuds and nobody else. I don't. I just think we're so unique that bringing other people it just complicates it. And I like your tie. I think the association of Cuds or whatever the V Cuda, V whatever it was. So it's the simplest. Yeah, like V Cuda. I like because it's kind of like Barracuda. Yeah. I would agree with you, Jeremy. I like the idea. I think it was good. The one question is, I know that. A lot of us are working pretty hard. Do we have people who are willing to take on the responsibility of going to the meetings for this thing as well as all the other meetings that we're doing? That is a terrific question. And I'm so glad you <laughs> asked it. Our one sort of paid person on the board. Yes. The, um, yeah. I, so honestly, the, those meetings are happening already anyways. Um, whether they continue to happen or not. Um, so, David, you've got some weird thing with your camera where it's showing part of your screen. I don't know if that's uh, intended, but that's that's kind of interesting. Um, so, I don't I don't think that's going to be a be a problem having somebody who's going to be the the liaison there. Um, I think the place where we may end up seeing our quote unquote executive director would be within this organization, frankly, because I think. Um, depending on the legislation that comes out um, in the next couple of weeks, they may be explicitly funding this. Um, and I'm, I would like to see them explicitly funding something like this, or at least um, you know, set, putting a grant there so that we could hire somebody to be the you know, CUD manager for all of us. Yeah, Chuck? With the um, potential emergence of this, this might be another avenue to open up that conversation with that Vermont Community Foundation, uh, since they were looking at statewide initiatives. And, uh, you know, so getting money to fund an executive director or, or something of that nature could be a very real possibility for this organization. Wow, that's a that's a really good idea. Okay, I will, n next time we talk about this, I will at least mention it. Uh, Ray, I see your hand up. Yeah, so um, we did something like this in 
for Virginia when I was the executive director of the Northern Virginia Technology Council and we set up technology councils throughout the state. And the importance of that was for amplification of the message to all the legislators throughout the state. They were all hearing the same message. And so this is a great vehicle for getting our acts together, deciding what it is we want and making them realize how important it is for their locality, their local region, and to, to support a particular uh, policy or process or funding. And so that is probably a primary objective of an organization like this. You know what that is? Okay. That's right. Michael, you, did you have your hand up, Michael? Uh, yeah, I did. I, did. Um, I don't think um, Kingdom Fiber should be part of this. I don't think Mansfield Community Fiber should be part of this. I don't think any for-profit organization should be part of this. But I do think that we shouldn't be exclusively CUD. I think any municipal solution in Vermont has similar challenges as CUDs. And um, I don't think we should cast them out as, as poor orphans and, and leave them out of the party. I think we should help them uh, and they may help us in return. So what, the town what, is, what is that? I, I don't know what kind of entity you're talking about to not uh, orphan. ReadyNet, um, Newbury, Reedsboro, Craftsbury, Burlington Telecom. Well, not Burlington oh. Telecom. They're, they're private now. But all those others are municipals. They're non-profit oh, municipals. Okay. But they're not actually CUDs. They're not CUDs. Okay. And I, I, I don't think they should be excluded. And that, that's the reason I liked the other names, because I didn't want to say, well, we'll let you guys be in the CUD organization, but it's still a CUD organization. So I like the idea of it being a telecom, a municipal telecom organization instead. But that's that's for all of it. You know, everybody will vote on what they want to name themselves. But I did pass my suggestions on to Jeremy and to um, FX, FX Flynn. Yeah. You remember Francis how long it took us to pick a name? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I I do. All right, well, so I, I will not bring that question back to the board, um, <laughs> but what, um, so is there any reason why we shouldn't? I mean, is there any sort of like, um, you know, big uh, big thing hovering over, you know, cloud hanging in anybody's minds that would say why we shouldn't pursue this? I think it's a good idea. And, and the contract is simple and direct and fine. I, I just want to offer a little caution, and that is if this does form, it will change the way state funding is considered for CUDs. Um, I, or at least I can imagine that, that, that there may be a mechanism that goes through the association of CUDs rather than individual CUDs um seeking state funding and, and i'm not saying that'll happen for sure but it's a possibility um so just as we enter we just need to consider and, and because we're going to be more advanced than many of the others we'll need to consider that possibility as it, as it starts to happen and i, I think so, some of that ken was uh was thought of in item six in terms of whether this organization can assume indebtedness. And I, I asked that in our, in our meeting, I, I just wanted clarity why they thought to put this in. And they said, well, you know, we didn't want this organization overshadowing. We didn't want this organization, you know, taking out loans to go build stuff for one of the CUDs or something in some sort of, uh, you know, inequitable sort of way. So, um, uh, that 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 made that made it clear to me, anyways. So no, but I, I think that makes sense. Your your concern about how funding might happen, and yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, League of Cities and Towns get gets funding that way too, and sort of hands some of that out, out to the towns. But I think that in terms of the towns, they typically get their own directly. Jeremy, I, I think you just answered my question, but I, I guess I I wasn't sure how the indebtedness piece would cover grants from the town you know if, if they're they're not going into debt if they're getting money from the from the state and then handing it out to cuds as opposed to the state handing it directly to cuds 
So I, I, I think yeah. that might have been more what Ken was saying. I see. So yeah, so so I mean, re remember again that this would also be a democratically, you know, organized and controlled organization, and that we would have our you know our seats at the table. And if we don't like the way something is happening, if we are you know we want to advocate for the state not to, you know, hand down any grant money to this organization, we can certainly ask. We can certainly make that request. And if we say you know it'd be better just for the CUDs to be prioritized individually rather than collectively so okay so what i think i would like to i'm going to try to do is um with the other the other cuds try to nail down a final draft and hopefully have that at our next meeting um, um final draft And uh, we'll have something for you to vote on at the next meeting. If you're really feeling uh, one way or the other about a, about a name or about something in the contract or something that you feel really needs to be added or removed or changed, um, yeah, try to get that to me in the next uh, next week or so, and I'll, I'll make sure that that gets in front of everybody else. Okay, uh, anything else on the CUD consortium agreement or, or uh, for that matter, the WET consortium? Anything else we need to talk about with if we're going to be consorting with other organizations? Oh, uh, Michael. <laughs> well, I, I want to go back to Ken's um, comments. Um, he's given me real pause. I, I, I am a little suddenly feeling a little concerned. Um, I think <laughs> this thing is inevitable. I think it will happen. This organization will happen. But yeah, it'll be a democratic organization, a, a, a gathering of equals. Uh, ValleyNet with 10 or 12 years experience, us with two and a half or three years experience, NEK with six months, some of them not even formed yet, some of them with 30 towns, some of them with four towns. How is it going to be equitably arranged if, if it's going to involve, become a conduit of state money, for example, or other big decisions? I like the idea of it being an an association that advocates for CUDs, but it does give me some nervousness about them having some power over our future. So maybe that, I don't know if I'm alone, Ken and I are alone in that, but if there's others that feel that way, maybe you need to communicate that as they're drafting the next version of the contract, the agreement. Chuck? So I, I do wonder if there may be a simple fix on that, which uh, in the agreement itself, whether it would be possible to just put some language um, um, specifically forbidding channeling of money directly uh, while allowing certain other activities such as uh, fund it, directly funding um, executive directors or grant writers or things of that nature that could be shared resources for the CUDs uh, but but explicitly prohibit money that that uh, funnels uh, down to the CUDs. Um, can I can I offer an example? Because we do we talk about sharing resources, and I think we all have an interest in having some of the technical um, expertise shared. But as Michael noted, some of these are in an earlier phase, and some of the technical assistance they're going to benefit from, we won't benefit from. And again, I'm just speculating that as the state um, directs funds to the multitude of CUDs, they they would want to have this association um, be the, the recipient of the funds for technical assistance. And it would we'll just always have to be, uh, see, I'm not convinced that it's a horrible idea, but we'll just always have to be ready for them funding some positions that we may not be able to take much advantage of. And, and therefore, the state will have considered its obligation complete with regard to providing technical assistance to CUDs, and we may not benefit from it. So just say, I'm not necessarily against it, just, just be aware that that's a possibility. And, and as it gets structured, and as the relationship with the state is formed, you know, we'll just need to keep our position pretty clear about uh, the, the potential to preclude actual state support for our efforts. All right, uh, Siobhan and then Rich. 
I was just going to say, I agree that we need to add language to any agreement that is clear about the CUDs have to get their funding from the state that it's not to, for their work, for, the, for what they're doing, that it's not what Chuck said. <laughs> I agree with what Chuck said. Okay, Rich. Do you see this as someone uh, as a they would have staff like paid staff, or is it just you know more of a, a just the different you know chairs or whatever from different groups uh, getting together? Because what I was yeah. what I was wondering about is and I'm you know I'm totally new to this I don't know anything about it, um, but like is it a role for like VLCT? to just act as, you know, that's something they do. They coordinate towns, they represent, they basically lobby or represent, you know, towns and their interests, and they don't get funding, well, maybe they do, but they don't get, a, you know, something that's already has a structure that already does um, works with towns, as opposed to a new, you know, another organization or another, you know, another set of structure. Yeah, so all of those things that you've said have actually been in the part of the, of the conversation. So, um, and that, that parallel with um, the League of Cities and Towns, I, I also used to serve on the select board here in Berlin, so I always took advantage of the League's resources whenever I could. And uh, yeah, and the, the folks that were in this, this kind of uh, consortium discussion um, appreciated that parallel. They didn't necessarily see this be, as being a vehicle for something like um, you know, passive, you know, providing, you know, workman, workman's comp or insurance, um, but they also didn't, you know, didn't write that off. Um, and I think initially it is going to be probably just, just the chairs or the, de you know, just delegates from the CUDs. Um, but I think one, one of the things that we were looking at as a board, you know, within the last year or two is, you know, do we hire an executive director to, to do some of these day-to-day -day things that are being managed by volunteers? This is something we've advocated for at the legislature, <clears throat> but is there really enough work for us, you know, for us here in our CUD to, and what, do we want to go through the bookkeeping requirements and all of the other requirements to hire on an employee to do these things? Um, and we sort of kind of talked ourselves in circles and said, yeah, you know, it'd be really great if we had somebody that we could pay to do this. And that was basically where the discussion went. So I think the other CUDs are also thinking that it might make sense to have some kind of centralization of some of the, you know, the basic bookkeeping, grant management, um, administrative stuff that because we're still small, you know, we're, we don't have, you know, we, we don't even have a, the, the, the budget sheet that, uh, you know, that Marshfield does or that Cabot does or Elmore does, um, we're still, so small, it just it doesn't even really make sense for us to spend any money on that. But now we're talking about a collection of CUDs that are, you know, eventually going to cover maybe the whole state. Um, and there's a lot of kind of commonalities and sort of growing pains that don't necessarily need to be there if everybody's kind of working from the same playbook. So it's kind of a long, rambly way of answering. I think your questions. Did I did I get to all of them? Well, Rich? I guess I, I was just wondering, like, have you talked to VLCT? Would they be, you know, I mean, like you said, the resources like copiers. They got copiers. You know, you don't necessarily, you know, that's a small thing. But I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they have a payroll. I mean, I'm not saying they would fund anything, but a person could work out of their offices potentially. I mean, I'm just, you know, they're an organization that exists. All the stuff, all, like all the stuff you mentioned. The difficulties of having paid staff and stuff so it's not difficult if it's within something else mm -hmm. that's all yeah so yeah. so we, we we did approach the uh the vermont league of cities and towns and they said funny you're not a city or a town i said but wait we're a municipality they said well <laughs> you, you can be an associate member then i was like well what does that give us and they're like uh you could be an associate yeah. member and that was really <laughs> about it we it would not have made us eligible to join okay. in their insurance pool um, because our insurance profile is so much different or whatever. And it turns out that uh, we have a VLCT member, our alternate from Moortown is Karen Horn, the lobbyist from, uh, mm -hmm. from, from the league. So. Um, I guess this, David, I mean, the analogy that I see to this is 
we have, I think there are 13 regional planning commissions and they have an association of regional planning commissions. And they are actually, you know, they're not quite a lobbying group that they try to take care of all the regional's needs. And it's, you know, it's not quite like the League of Cities and Towns is much more of a lobbying organization as anything else. Uh, CUDs were created by the legislature. So it's sort of, and regional planning commissions were created by the legislature. So I don't know. I mean, that might be one way of looking at it, another way of looking at it anyway. Jeremy, I'd like Jeremy, to add something. Oh, go ahead to Jerry and then Jeremy. Yeah, there's, there's, um, yeah. I'm a little concerned about adding another variable into our decision making process. Um, you know, we're really small right now and we're all volunteer and we're scrapping it together, but it's very possible that six months from now, we'll be in a very different position with uh, considerable money to spend and a consultant on board that'll be helping us actually implement. Uh, and we'll be far, far different situation than the other CUDs other than uh, EC Fiber. So, you know, I. It's certainly a, a good idea to band together, especially when it comes for lobbying and things of that nature. But I would be very concerned about adding another variable into our decision-making process, our sovereignty, if you will. Fair enough. Thanks for that, Jerry. Jeremy, you had something? Uh, yeah, I, I was. I mean, one thing that just popped into my head, and it's probably maybe not an issue, but just popped into my head, and uh, would be if we're going to be sharing technical resources maybe sharing an executive director would there be any possibility of conflicts of interest where this person might be asked to do one thing for us and something conflicting for some other cud or might you know run you know see our information that we don't want public right now but is also part of this other organization and you know i I don't know. I'm just asking that question if, if that's something that could happen. I, I mean, that that came up in, in conversation mainly in terms of uh, competing interests. You know, so if there is, you know, is does this organization have to, you know, choose their favorite child? And and we want the agreement. We wanted to structure it in such a way that it was lightweight, and we didn't really ever have to um, make that sort of decision. So, but. Is it is it going to happen where where we're going to where we might not like what this overall organization does, and it's because it serves you know another another CUD better? And I think the answer, of course, is yes. I think that's a, a risk we may want to take or may not want to take. I mean, having sat on the uh, you know as Berlin's representative to the league, the League of Cities and Towns. You know, policy making, um, policy making meeting, um, and you get you know a, a couple hundred people from all sorts of different towns across the state trying to agree on municipal policies. Wow, that is it's it's wild. It was really really wild, and n nobody walked away from there totally satisfied. So yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. No. I, so thanks for that. Um, and I mean, I, I guess. That's something that you know. This is a organization, and they, and it will do what it wants. Um, I guess my feeling is that it's a good idea, and that we will probably lose more by not joining it when it happens than we would by not joining it. So that, that's my feeling anyway. But it's just kind of a gut feeling. So thanks, Michael. Um, I agree with Jeremy there. Um, this is. This is worth joining. Um, it is good to have an association to lobby for us in the legislature, to gain resources for us, and for us to share resources with others. There's nothing the matter with any of that. Um, the only concern I have is with the financial arrangements. And I think Chuck's poison pill idea would solve that. And, and then we can proceed. I don't mind if someone gets a little more than someone else out of the deal. That's okay. Uh, I, I'm I'm a member of WISPA, which is the Wireless ISP Association. Um, it is the most sharing organization. We we share so much technologically with each other, and some of us take much more advantage than others. 
and you know the little guys like me don't get as much as the big guys do but it's really valuable what i wouldn't want to have happen is what ken was suggesting that for convenience sake the government says oh we don't have to think about all these individuals let's just throw you know four million dollars out at the cuds and let them figure out what to do with it that's where it gets dicey and so let's just tell our association we want you to happen but we don't want you to have that power i can i can totally agree with that any any other thoughts about this so so it, it so it sounds like generally people think this is a good idea with this i think this one maybe two kind of main hang-ups but it sounds like that with some appropriately set policy hopefully right in the contract here um we can maybe get to a comfortable place does that seem reasonable so i will i will add that or uh i'll add that and it will be lawyerized and uh We'll probably see it again at our next meeting then. But uh, yeah, thanks Thanks for all that. Is there anything else that uh, anybody wants to add to this before we move on? Okay. All right, we are in the home stretch and it's not even 7.20 yet. Isn't this amazing? Um, I have approval of April 14th and May 26th meeting minutes. We've had some um, We've had some good uh, feedback about the May 26 meeting minutes. Uh, Jeremy, you, I think you got what six six sets of updates and updated them. And as far as I could tell, I didn't see anything else after everybody's revisions. Um, and I don't know if you remember the April 14th meeting, but I I glanced over it and it seemed it seemed reasonable. And does anybody have any uh, changes or updates to any of those minutes of note? All right, so go for it. No, both. As, I move that we accept both uh, minutes as written. Um, that's it. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. okay. Seconded by Phil. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion? All right. Let's let's try to do this like we did the last time. I know we should be doing uh, roll call votes, but. This is not a controversial one. I will assume that we have consensus unless somebody unmutes and tells me to stop and ask for a roll call. So I'll give you a moment to unmute if you want to, if you want us to stop and take a roll call. Okay, he hearing no, no protests, no screams of pain, I'm gonna assume that we have a consensus on this and the motion, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Um, all right, we are at round table. We're gonna be done before 7.30. So let's go, um, let's go from the bottom alphabetical order, first name up. We'll start with, with you, Trev. How's it going? Anything you wanna add for our, our round table before we adjourn? Uh, no, things are going well, thank you. And I'm, I am playing a little catch up. I know I had to come in late today and I uh, appreciate the conversation. I, I don't have much to add tonight, thanks. Sure, thanks, Trev. Tom? I'm all set. Good to see everybody. All right. Thanks, Tom. Rich? Uh, no. Um, it was good to hear news, you know, good to attend the meeting, get a sense of what's going on. All right. So. Yeah. Welcome and thank you. Uh, Ray? Uh, nothing. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. Phil? Nothing, Dad. Good meeting. Progress. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Phil. Siobhan? Nope. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Siobhan. Uh, Michael? Go on. Don't let this us know. Next two, <laughs> <laughs> this next two weeks are going to be very momentous for us as we make some choices. And uh, which actually that, that prompts the, uh, um, I'll just in, insert myself here. Um, we will have another meeting in two weeks. So It'll be the same the same time, June twenty third. Uh, it'll be the same same format, um, unless all of you feel like you wanted to have an in person meeting at some point. I don't really feel I don't really <laughs> feel like we need to do that just yet. Um, so um, maybe maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get to some point and we can all uh, we can all have a you know 
ha have a meeting with a pint, something like that, right? See, Ken, Ken's already beat us to that. So. Oh, and and Ray's already got it. All right. Okay. So, uh, speaking of speaking of whom, and Jeremy's got it too. All right, Ken. Oh, great discussion tonight. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Ken. John, from Worcester. I can hear you now. Anything to add, John? Okay, I heard you heard you for a second. Uh, or you can just shout out if it, uh, if you have anything to add. Let's move on to uh, Jeremy. Oops, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going going in the wrong order. Let's let's do instead uh, Josh. Uh, nothing more to add. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Uh, John from uh, Marshfield, anything you would like to add? Uh, thanks for inviting me, and I uh, look forward to getting my feet on the ground. All right. Thanks, John. Jerry? Nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Jeremy? Uh, thanks for all your work, everyone, and uh, welcome to all the new folks. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Exciting. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, let's see, David. Yeah, I have only one thing. At last meeting, we approved applying for the Northern Border Regional Commission grant. I just want to let you know it all went in, and we applied for six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and we should know at the end of August, I believe. That's all I have. Very exciting. Very exciting news. Thank you, David. Uh, Chuck. I know pretty much everybody said this in the last meeting, but uh, I'll take the opportunity to thank David because I know that was a monumental amount of work to get that grant out there. Um, and, you know, obviously grants being grants, who, we'll see what happens, but uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for everything you did to, to make that a, a reality because uh, that was huge. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, Andy. Uh, no, the appreciation. I, I did appreciate the uh, the link today on the. I did watch that the committee hearing, and I found that interesting. It was a. This is this whole topic has gotten quite interesting. Um, but just generally, thanks to everybody, and let's keep going. <clears throat> thanks, Andy. And if and just so you know, if you didn't watch the whole stream, they are meeting again. Uh, starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. They'll probably be going like 9 to 11 or more, and they will be making the final decisions about um, how to allocate that COVID funding. They have to have that um, that feedback back to uh, House Appropriations by tomorrow at 1, yeah, 1 p.m. They have no, no more time. So you will hear <laughs> a lot of frantic scrambling around and saying, all right, fine, let's throw that away. But uh, yeah, if you want to tune in, it'll, it'll be um, it should be something around the same link that I sent out, or just go to the legislature and look for House Energy and Tech. All right, last but not least, uh, Alan. Yeah, so the discussion about a CUD association raised some red flags for me because one of the things I think I've learned hearing all the discussions about how broadband gets built out in this state it seems the evidence is it doesn't work all, all that well when you try a centralized effort. I mean, the state, I think, has to admit it's failed over a great many years to really reach the goals that it set for itself. And I think EC Fiber showed me, at least, that the one thing that really does work is a, is, is a very local effort. So when I hear about a statewide association, I start thinking, no, no, the centralization is something we know has not worked. Why do we want to sort of move in that direction. So it was a really interesting discussion and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it'll be interesting deciding what to do. I think the idea, the idea of having a statewide association of CUDs is a good one, but I'm not sure the implementation is really gonna work the way that people think. I think the state is gonna force it to be something maybe the association itself doesn't wanna do. And I would worry about that. Thanks though, it was a good meeting. All right. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Jeremy, you want to get the last word? Oh, I, I just had a 
question whether maybe more rhetorical than anything, but just wondering if the reason that the statewide efforts failed was because from what I understand, and I could be wrong about this, that they're trying to go through for-profit organizations. And was it a pro problem with being a for-profit organization rather than a CUD? Because I think that CUDs are a very different thing. We're not worried about pleasing <laughs> some investor and, and making sure that our quarterly profits are 8% or whatever. So anyways, that was my thought. Yeah, I like blaming the for-profits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, well, um, on that note, I am going to declare us adjourned. Thanks everybody for attending and we'll uh, see you in two weeks, if not sooner. Thank you everyone. Bye -bye. Siobhan, I forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michael.